Hi, I'm back, and now this section that we're going to do is called comparing fractions with greater than or less than, and then doing order of operations with fractions. I'm going to show you one example of each problem, and we're going to the board. When you are comparing fractions, you're trying to see which one's bigger, and this could be used if you want to see which discount would be better, getting three-fourths off or getting two-thirds off. So when I have these two fractions, I have one half and then I have four thirds. What we want to do is we want to make these equivalent fractions first. So the way we do this is find the least common denominator between our two and our three, and the common denominator would be six. And again, if you change the denominator, you have to change the numerator. So two divides into six three times. So one times three is three. 3 divides into 6 2 times, so 2 times 4 is 8. Once you make your denominators the same, then all you're concerned with are the numerators. So when I look at the numerators, I have a 3 and I have an 8. So you ask yourself, which one's bigger, the 3 or the 8? The 8 is bigger. So therefore, reading from left to right, 3 6 is less than 8 6. And when the symbol points to the left, this is less than. If the symbol pointed to the right, it would be greater than. And a way that a lot of people remember this is to make like a little alligator math mouth out of them and say that the alligator eats the bigger number. So maybe that will help you. All right, the other problem we're going to do is an order of operations problem. Um, I'm going to erase this now because I need a lot of room. And when you do order of operations, you have to remember back from one of the very first modules, if you're in this section, and it said, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And the P stood for what? It stood for parentheses. So we have to do what's inside the parentheses first. Okay, well, I see two different sets of parentheses. This set of parentheses has an exponent attached to it, so I'm going to deal with that in just a minute. This set of parentheses right here has subtraction, so I want to go ahead and get rid of those first. So to get rid of them, it's subtracting fractions. So what do you have to do? Find a common denominator, change your fractions. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to work that part out. So I have 5 eighths minus 1 half. So what's the common denominator between these two? Eight. All right, the first fraction, I didn't change the bottom, so I don't change the top. The second fraction, I went from two to eight by multiplying by four, so I do the top times four. And then you write the bottom, collect the top. I can't reduce that, so I'm gonna leave it the way it is, okay? So now I'm going to replace this part right here with one eighth. And once you do that, you can take the um, parentheses off. So bring down the rest of the problem. Okay. Now we want to do exponents. So our exponents are next. Exponent meaning that is squared. So when you have a fraction and you want to raise it to the second power, you want to raise the numerator to the second power and the denominator to the second power. So when I do that, that means two-thirds times two-thirds. So two times two would make four. Three times three would make nine, okay? So remember, that means two-thirds times two-thirds. That is what this means. Okay, now I have 4 ninths minus 1 eighth divided by 3 halves, okay? So the next thing that I want to do, I'm going to erase my scratch work over here. 
the next thing that I want to do is remember the rest of the order of operations. Once you get rid of parentheses, once you get rid of exponents, the next thing you want to do is do multiplication and division from left to right. So I see division in my problem. So I'm going to work that out next. I have negative one-eighth divided by three halves. Well, we've done a previous module where we divided fractions, and it said dividing fractions, easy as pie, just flip the second, flip the second, and multiply. So I changed division to multiplication, and I flipped the second fraction, and now I just multiply. So I can reduce this 2 and this 8. 2 divides into 2 one time. 2 divides into 8 four times. Once you've reduced your fraction as low as you can, you multiply top times top, which is negative 1, bottom times bottom, which is 12. So that part of my work gives me negative 1 12, okay? So now I'm down to one step left. And in order to do this step, I'm going to have to erase some of this, and I'm going to rewrite the original problem. Well, no, I won't. I'm going to write it way up here. Can you see that? Yeah. So that would be 4 ninths that I have left minus 1 twelfth. This is what I have left over, and I will change colors right here. This is what's left over. All right, so in order to do that, again, you're going to have to find a common denominator and do the subtraction. So I'm going to erase the original problem now so that I have room to work all this out. Um, my common denominator between 9 and 12 is 36. And I changed from a 9 to a 36 by multiplying by 4. So I do the top times 4, so 4 times 4 would make 16. I went from a 12 to a 36 by multiplying by 3, so that would be 1 times 3, which would be 3. And now I just write the bottom, collect the top, reduce the fraction if you can, and if you can't, then you stop. And 13 is a prime number, but it does not go into 36 an even number of times. So that is all we can do with that. Okay, there are other problems on there. Um, the notes that I'm going to put up will have more worked out step by step for you to go along with so that you can practice before you take your little self-assessment.